Welcome, I'm Lee Cowan and this is Here Comes the Sun, a closer look at some of the people, places, and things we bring you every weekend on Sunday morning. Stage and screen legend Julie Andrews, beloved for her performances in Mary Poppins and The Sound of Music, has taken on a different role in recent years, that of a children's book author, with help from her daughter and co-author, Emma Walton Hamilton. Sunday morning host Jane Paul caught up with the pair. Waiting in the Wings, your latest book, is a uh, true story? Yes. Uh, some years ago, uh, here at Bay Street Theater in Sag Harbor, uh, we happened to notice that a pair of ducks were nesting in a planter in our courtyard out front. Soon, an altogether different sound filled the air. A pleasant, melodious one coming from inside the building. We and of course, our ducks see. in the book are uh, theatrical ducks, very much so. They hear music. Well, one of them is. Later in the show, Andrew's daughter recalls an early memory of her famous mom. Well, I have a, I have a funny story in that, in that when Mary oh Poppins my came out, yeah. uh, I, was, I was just a baby when they made the film, but because of the special effects and so forth, mm -hmm. it, it took about two, a little over two years between the time that the film was made and the time that it actually came out. And, was and by that time I was three and I was uh, shopping with a nanny, with a babysitter in a children's department store. So there were all these life-size cardboard cutouts of my mom as Mary Poppins staged around the, the floor. And I said to my nanny, look, there's my mummy. Uh -huh. And I suddenly became aware of this other pair of women who were shopping, saying to each other, isn't that sweet? <laughs> that little girl thinks her mother is Mary Poppins. Yeah. And I remember thinking, she is. Julie Andrews may be practically perfect in every way. And so too are flowers. Lilia Luciano takes us to the mountains of Colombia, where farmers grow 75% of the cut blooms sold here in the US. The optimal soil and climate of Colombia's flower growing regions. It's what makes Medellin the city of eternal spring and the world's flower basket. Every year, the Londoños and other growers attend the Feria de las Flores, the festival of the flowers, to celebrate the beauty and bounty of their blooms. There they showcase the silletas, wooden flower carriers they parade on their backs. That's all coming up right here on Here Comes the Sun. Julie Andrews lost her ability to sing professionally after a 1997 throat operation gone wrong. But her daughter, Emma Walton Hamilton, pointed out that she'd find a new way to use her voice, and she did, authoring children's books. Together, the mother and daughter duo has written 35 of them, including their latest about a couple of theatrical ducks. Here's Sunday morning's Jane Pollock. Spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. The medicine Mary Poppins was Julie Andrews' first film. Her second was The Sound of Music. The hills are alive with the sound of music. If she had never made another movie, she might still be one of Hollywood's most endearing and beloved stars in white dresses with blue satin sashes. And generation after generation would still be singing along. White winters that melt into springs. These are a few of my favorite things. Though that was just the beginning of a career literally in its eighth decade, it's a very good place to start. Because now Julie Andrews is a writer of children's books with co-author and daughter Emma Walton Hamilton. Their latest is a story of the theater from the perspective of a duck. Mr. and Mrs. Puddle Duck were expecting their first clutch of eggs. Waiting in the Wings, your latest book, is a uh, true story? Yes. Uh, some years ago, uh, here at Bay Street Theater in Sag Harbor, uh, we happened to notice that a pair of ducks were nesting in a planter in our courtyard out front. Soon, an altogether different sound filled the air. A pleasant, melodious one coming from inside the building. We and of course, our see. ducks in the book are theatrical ducks, very much so. They hear music. Well, one of them is. Mr. Puddle Duck, in our version of the story, sneaks into the theater.
Waiting in the Wings is the 35th book by this prolific partnership, a collaboration that has given Julie Andrews a, a new voice. 30 years ago, a surgical procedure went horribly wrong, destroyed her famous soprano, and took her identity. One day I was bemoaning my fate and missing very much the fact that I couldn't sing because the surgery went awry and took away my ability to do what I love to do. And so uh, I was bemoaning my fate to Emma and she said, oh, mom, you've just found another way of sharing your voice. And I tell you, it hit me so hard what she said. And I've never really bemoaned it since. Sounding a lot like a younger Julie Andrews. When the Lord closes a door, somewhere he opens a window. And there are some other intriguing parallels. Both Maria and Mary Poppins must win over skeptical children. They are all about fun, but not all about fun. They are sly teachers. They are optimists. Yes, they are. But they recognize that children have real problems. You're absolutely right, and I, and I think you we and don't I, talk down to no, children. No, we don't talk down to kids. We don't. We try to bring them up so that you don't c condescend in any way. She's loved books since she was a child. Waves of Nazi planes from westward. Though born in 1935, her childhood memories include air raid sirens. London is safe to shelter and running for cover during the Blitz, the German bombing of London during World War II. Her parents had already split up. It was her stepfather who discovered her voice. A nine-year-old soprano with an astonishing four-octave range. And little Julie became part of her parents' musical act on the vaudeville circuit. Before long, she was supporting the family. You were paying the mortgage. Yes, I was eventually, yes. As a, a teenager. Yes. The family mortgage. Well, we needed cash dreadfully. So eventually, when I was about 15, I went out on my own, all around England, round and around and around. But with the responsibility that your family needed a roof over their head. They, and, yes. And it was and your the, the, yes, really. job to do it. Well, I was part of the family trying to do it, but eventually it was just me because my, my stepfather was um, an alcoholic, sadly. So all that work and all that training, very serious training, you weren't reaching for the stars. No, in fact, doubting that I ever would. I mean, I was doing it because it helped and I had to. In my teens, I would think, what is all this for? Where is it going to lead? And then suddenly the world broke open. At 19, she was cast as the lead in a Broadway show. A 10-year veteran of the stage and a trained vocalist, but she was not quite ready. I didn't have acting lessons or anything like that. I picked it up and learned, and people are very kind. And, you know, uh, they don't hurt puppies, actually, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a puppy, and I didn't know what the heck I was doing, but I learned and was grateful for all of the teaching that I got. I could have danced all night. Still a newcomer, at 20, she created the role of Eliza Doolittle, opposite veteran Rex Harrison in Lerner and Lowe's 1956 smash hit, My Fair Lady. In my own little the following year, she starred in a CBS production of Rodgers and Hammerstein's Cinderella on television. 100 million Americans saw Julie Andrews for the first time. In, short, simply not. in 1960, she was Guinevere to Richard Burton's King Arthur in Camelot. But when Walt Disney was in the audience one night, he saw his Mary Poppins. Chim, chiminy, chim, chiminy, chim, chim, when you're with a sweep, you're in glad company. It was an Academy Award-winning performance. Julie Andrews and Mary In her very first motion picture. Oh, this is lovely. Uh, I know you Americans are famous for your hospitality, but this is really ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Julie! 
She still radiates grace and gratitude, but in the very British tradition of getting on with things. Oh, I just feel most of my life that I've been so very, very fortunate to have the identity of a singing voice, to have the opportunities to learn about how to be on stage or film or whatever. You were very fortunate and you were also very unfortunate in some ways. You know, growing up in the war with alcoholic parents and being put to work at a very young age and being essentially robbed of a feeling, childhood. Feeling needed and vital and valuable yeah. too, yeah. But her mantra has always been, are we lucky or what? That's the, I think, whether or not it's true, yeah. it is the thing that got you through. Perhaps I had a wicked child. When Maria in The Sound of Music She's fallen in love, and he's in love, and it's, it's the... And she sings the song that includes a line. So somewhere in my youth... Somewhere in... I almost my sang youth it. And in my youth and childhood. I must have done something good. I must have done something good. Well, somebody must have, because I got so damned fortunate. Are we lucky? <laughs> or what? Yeah. yeah. Up next, an exclusive excerpt from Jane Pauley's chat with Julie Andrews and Emma Walton Hamilton, something you can only see right here on Here Comes the Sun. Stay with us. Somebody had to be fortunate enough to do it, and I, I was. As promised, here's more from Jane Pauley's interview with Julie Andrews and Emma Walton Hamilton. In The Sound of Music, the children have problems with their father's attention and so forth. But more seriously, there are Nazis at the door. Yes, Very real. Yes. Meanwhile, you were a child. And had Nazis at the door. And the Nazis were literally at the door. They were right close to the coastline of, of Great Britain. They were, yeah, of England. And you were in London during the Blitz? Yes. Just interesting stories because the Blitz wasn't just bombing. I mean, everything came things kept being invented and from from uh, airplanes and bombers and so on suddenly it was the doodlebugs which were the pilotless aircraft the bombs that were sent across with a some kind of an engine and then they'd cut out and drop and they were called doodlebugs in 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 my time and they were scary well i have a i have a funny story in that in that when mary oh poppins my God. came out <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was I was just a baby when they made the film, but because of the special effects and so forth, mm -hmm. it, it took about two, a little over two years between the time that the film was made and the time that it actually came out. And, was and by that time I was three, and I was uh, shopping with a nanny, with a babysitter, in a children's department store, and I was in the clothing section, and the department store had somehow gotten well, I hope they got permission <laughs> to use Mary Poppins as no, they've made, their... they've done a huge setup, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. and they'd obviously, um, they were using the whole concept of Mary Poppins as their display that, that month or, mm -hmm. uh, or whatever. <laughs> and so there were all these life-size cardboard cutouts of my mom as Mary Poppins staged around the, the floor. And I said to my nanny, look, there's my mummy. Uh -huh. And I suddenly became aware of this other pair of women who were shopping, s saying to each other, isn't that sweet? <laughs> that little girl thinks her mother is Mary Poppins. Yeah. And I remember thinking, she is, you know? Your second memoir, which um, came out long enough ago that we're waiting for memoir three. Oh dear. You have an inexhaustible capacity to work. I don't know if you work that hard because you love to no, work? Are no, you my, normally my, my phrase, um, uh, the great choreographer, Michael Kidd, who was a great, great friend, he'd say, Julie comes into work looking happy, radiant, and says, oh, I'm exhausted. And it, <laughs> I would say it was such delight and fierceness that I was anything but exhausted, but I really felt exhausted. <laughs> But she, I think necessity was the mother of invention in those days. I mean, it, it, these were professional obligations and commitments that she had to follow through on. Because we wrote the two memoirs together, I had the 
uh, the privilege and the opportunity to read her all of her journals from the various periods that we wrote about. And, and I would often joke with her as when I would come in to work on any given day and say, look, you know, January 23rd, I'm exhausted. <laughs> January 24th, I'm exhausted. Like every single day, <laughs> every journal it. entry was yeah. how, how fatigued she was, how tired she was. And yet never, uh, visually somehow I never let on, but no. I would declare it great. forcefully, yes, um, and feel it. And not complain about it because it you're was British. Yeah. And so you were born was, in England, neither one of yeah. you complain. Somebody had to be fortunate enough to do it, and I, I was. I mean, look at the jobs that I was doing. It's, I mean, it's lovely to be asked to do um, Sound of Music or, you know, a big, big singing songs that are glorious with a big orchestra. There's no, there's these, no joy like that. I think your career, and Emma, you please jump in at any time Don't because worry. you know your mother's life as, as well as anyone on earth. She um, does. I'm sure she does. The subsequent um, work uh, that uh, Julie Andrews did on film uh, in acting roles probably should justify uh, the recognition she got in her first film. Oh, do you agree? I do agree. Re if one could win an award retroactively or looking ahead, then I think it was well worth it. Up next, a blooming business. Welcome back. Giving someone flowers can be a sign of love, congratulations, or consolation. Three quarters of those cut flowers sold in the U.S. are from Colombia, where generations of farmers and their families take pride in the beauty of their work. Lilia Luciano has the story. These daisies, they're Colombian. As a gesture of love, in celebration, or just to say, hang in there, nothing says it quite like flowers. Have a great day. And though you may not know it, beyond the beauty, a big part of their allure comes from the far off land, culture, and the people who grow them. High atop the mountains outside of Medellin, Colombia, sits the Londoño family farm, where four generations have been working the fields. I had never seen flowers this bright, this rich, this, this colorful. What's your secret? You sprinkle it, you give it love. Love is a secret. And you say that a flower is like a woman. If you don't give it love, se acaba. You talk to them, le habla. That and the optimal soil and climate of Colombia's flower growing regions. It's what makes Medellin the city of eternal spring and the world's flower basket. Every year, the Londoños and other growers attend the Feria de las Flores, the festival of the flowers, to celebrate the beauty and bounty of their blooms. There they showcase the silletas, wooden flower carriers they parade on their backs. The 2,000 flower display Luis Felipe carries weighs more than 200 pounds. Before him, it was his parents, Blanca Ligia and Ivan de Jesus, who shouldered the Londoño family legacy. Londoño, Londoño. Year after year, the family vies with 400 other growers for the top prizes. There's almost a million people that are going to be seeing your silleta. What does that feel like? ¿Cómo se siente? Feliz. 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 Happy. 75% of the 75. flowers imported in the in United States are from Colombia. We are the most important exporter of cut flowers for the United States and the second in the world. Juan David Lacuona leads Deli Flor Americas, the largest chrysanthemum breeder in the world, located in the outskirts of Medellin. Labor is so cheap here, because you know in Florida they have growers and stuff, but the problem is labor is it's more expensive it's there. It's very expensive. It's like $15 an hour. That's, that's like two here. Colombian flowers are sold in all 50 states, a nearly $2 billion industry. The carnations are from Colombia. They are. And then we have these beautiful uh, butterfly ranunculus. 
Gary Page has been a wholesale florist in New York City's vibrant flower district since 1984. Why do you choose Colombian flowers when you do? Because of their quality and price. And those Colombian flowers also foster jobs here in the U.S. You've got the drivers that pick up. You've got the people who put together the arrangements. You've got the people who man the stores. It's commerce. It's commerce at a great scale. It is with a perishable product. So you better be on your damn toes. A global chain rooted in local tradition. It's a special person who goes to the same plot of land every week and creates a product like the flowers. And then they sell that flower to feed and clothe their children, education. It was thanks to our flowers and our effort that we were able to send all of our eight children to school, says Don Ivan. Luis Felipe Londoño. And although one of those children dreamt of being an international soccer star, though not on a jersey, millions of fans still got to know his family name. I'm Lee Cameron. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you right here next time on Here Comes the Sun.